The King of the Monsters has finally resurfaced. Originally titled Godzilla Resurgence, but later changed to Shin Godzilla, Shin meaning new or true in Japanese. A subtle reminder that no matter how popular the American version is, Godzilla's rightful home is with Toho, and no one can compete with that. Or it could just mean new Godzilla, and I mean, that's good too. It's just been released in the U.S. on DVD and Blu-ray, and I'm going to cover some of the history and plot. Shin Godzilla is the 31st entry altogether in the 29th in the Japanese series, which up until now has been divided into three eras, Showa, Heisei, and Millennium, each separated by a hiatus that varied in length. This marks the first true reboot to the franchise as it actually starts from scratch. Godzilla has been reintroduced many times before, but only acting as more of a sequel, where the monster is recognized from the 1954 original. This time the Japanese have no idea what this thing is or what it's capable of. As a reboot, the plot is, as expected, pretty simple. An unidentified monster emerges from Tokyo Bay and destroys Japan. It begins as an early stage dragon type creature stumbling around the city, but eventually evolves into Godzilla. After numerous failed military attempts, the Japanese realize that he can't be destroyed, so they plant explosives in surrounding buildings to knock him down so they can execute a deep freeze plan to immobilize and ultimately end up coexisting with him. A lot of people mistake this movie to be a follow-up to the 2014 Gareth Edwards film, and although it has no connection whatsoever, the timing was no coincidence. In 1995, after 22 films, Toho shook the world with their decision to kill Godzilla in Godzilla vs. Destroyer, and it was a big deal. Three years later, TriStar comes out with an American version that was very forgettable, as it disappointed everyone after all the hype it stirred up. Toho saw this and said, hey, we gotta show them how it's done! So after his name had been dragged through the mud, they resurrect Godzilla the very next year in Godzilla 2000, which jump-starred the Millennium Era, running for six movies up until 2004's Godzilla Final Wars, where Godzilla was once again put to rest. I remember seeing the headline as a kid, and I was upset, because I thought he'd never return. But, fast forward ten years later to another American Godzilla movie. Even though it was a huge success this time, history repeats itself as Toho answered back by announcing a new movie of their own December of that same year, resulting in Shin Godzilla two years later. After being dormant for 12 years, the longest gap between any of the Godzilla films, The King of the Monsters is finally back. This new Godzilla reaches 118 and a half meters, about 33 feet taller than the American version, making it the tallest Godzilla to date. I saw this movie while it was having a very limited theatrical run across the US and Canada on only 440 screens, and it was awesome. It was the first time I'd ever seen a Japanese Godzilla movie in theaters, so it was a very new experience for me. But, I do have to mention some nitpicks. Firstly, there's too much talking. With no other monsters to battle, Godzilla's left flying at Solo while most of the movie centers around council meetings and press conferences, pushing the film to be too long and somewhat boring. Clocking in at two hours, it's nearly the longest Godzilla film. Japanese, of course. Second only to Final Wars by five minutes. But at least that was action-packed! Secondly, Godzilla's early stage looks ridiculous. He looks like a giant puppet and it's actually laughable. It reminds me of the 1957 movie The Giant Claw. There's some other funny details scattered throughout the movie, like its use of overly specific subtitles. This is the Tokyo Atomic Energy Research Laboratory. This is the Nuclear Energy Policy Planning Division Chief. This is a bridge. This is the ninth floor broom closet. Nothing to really complain about, but just kind of unnecessary. Even the box art wants to make sure you don't have any questions. Like, look at this. A god incarnate, a city doomed. I like that. Turn it to the side, up, oh, there it is again. Now to focus on the positive areas of the film. Godzilla's final form is incredible. He looks absolutely terrifying. Unfortunately, it looks like it's the end of an era as it's all CG, leaving behind the classic man in a suit approach, which I prefer. But the fresh new look doesn't disappoint. Another thing is the soundtrack. Along with the original Godzilla theme thrown in for good measure as he comes ashore, there's a great apocalyptic musical score as he completely obliterates the city with his atomic heat beam, which now also shoots out of his back and tail. It's crazy! So aside from all the political talk, it's a very entertaining movie, but if you're new to the franchise, I wouldn't recommend starting with this one as it is pretty slow. This movie is almost reminiscent of Godzilla vs. Destroya, where Godzilla's heart is basically a nuclear reactor ready to explode, so they freeze him in an attempt to lower his body temperature to minimize the blast. So what's next for the franchise? Currently Japan is working on an animated trilogy, and that's new. The first film set to be released this November. As far as a live action movie goes, co-director of Shin Godzilla, Shinji Higuchi, commented on the possibility of a sequel stating, they cannot make it until after 2020. I really hope this movie has sparked a new string of Godzilla movies to come, but until then, just have to wait and see.